So a new week is upon us and that can only mean one thing, we've got an abundance more of transfer rumours going around the championship, all of which will be discussed in today's video. If you've seen any of those transfer rumours that we don't mention in today's video, make sure to get them in the comments down below. And a massive thank you to you guys for all the support you've shown on the transfer video so far. We've just hit 19,000 subscribers as well, so a massive thank you for that. But we've got some rumours that caught me off guard a little bit and I'm excited to see what you guys have to say about some of them. Before we do get into any transfer speculation, we've got a bit of manager news going around the league at the moment. Obviously West Brom are still in the hunt for a new manager and one really bizarre story that came up a few days ago was that they were potentially interested in bringing in Chris Wilder from Sheffield United. When I saw this one, I mean I didn't know what to think of it. This was never going to be on the cards. The link in the first place was a bit strange but it's now looking like Chris Wilder is set to sign a new contract with Sheffield United and uh, I mean that was a bit of a non-story in the first place really. And there are still some other clubs looking for a manager over the summer. Middlesbrough on the hunt at the moment with Jonathan Woodgate remaining as the favourite to take over there. And quite an interesting one with Swansea looking to replace Graham Potter where Thierry Henry has emerged as the second favourite to take over at the moment with Mickey Mellon said to be the bookies favourite. So if you are a fan of a club without a manager at the moment let me know down below who you'd like to see come in. But without further ado let's go ahead and hop in to some transfer speculation. And so we'll start the video out with the big transfer rumour and that is the potential swap deal which sees Jota moving from Birmingham to Aston Villa and Gary Gardner moving the other way. It's looking like Villa will be paying about £4 million to be getting Jota as well as sending Gardner back to Birmingham. When this story came up it was an interesting one for me and I'm a bit conflicted about what I think of it really. Jota is a quality player in the championship if not a little bit inconsistent. I can see where this link has come from obviously with Jota previously working for Dean Smith at Brentford and Jota's best form of his career probably came at Brentford while under Dean Smith. In the 2016-17 season in 19 starts for Brentford he was able to score 12 goals and pick up 5 assists. In the second half of that season he was absolutely unplayable and since moving to Birmingham he's not really been able to rekindle that form. I would argue that he's not particularly fit into the system they play. You know, playing a flat 4-4-2 doesn't necessarily get the best out of a creative player like Jota, who sometimes may be a little bit isolated on that right-hand side and can go missing from games sometimes. If he's played in a more fluid forward three, with license to roam and more onus on possession, then maybe Jota will actually fit into that Villa system a little bit better. My only question would be, would he be able to make that step up to the Premier League? Probably go to say that it's not the worst deal for both clubs, actually. Villa are never going to use Gary Gardner, and I thought that Gardner did fairly well for Birmingham last season, actually. So I to get Birmingham and Aston Villa fans' opinions on what you make of this potential swap deal. Speaking of Aston Villa, they have gone ahead and released eight players, some of which I think are bound to be linked to some championship clubs in the next few weeks, one especially being Albert Adoma. He didn't have the best of seasons for Aston Villa, scoring four goals and picking up two assists, but he'd still be a quality addition to many championship clubs. The previous season, he scored 14 and got five assists, so I think that there's definitely going to be some championship interest in him over the next few weeks. And sticking with Aston Villa for the moment, they are also being linked to Kamar Roof of Leeds United. Finally, a championship striker that Villa haven't been linked to in the past week or so but obviously after coming off the back of a decent season for Leeds scoring 15 goals it's looking like there will be a bit of Premier League interest in the striker. Kamal Roof to Aston Villa I'm not sure if that would be Villa's best option to go for maybe as a backup striker perhaps. I think that Villa could look down some different avenues for Premier League strikers. And Aston Villa are also said to be interested in Middlesbrough winger Marcus Tavernier. Last season the majority of his appearances came off the bench he only started two games for Borough under Tony Pulis and made 18 appearances from the bench. In that time he scored three goals and picked up one assist, predominantly playing on the left wing. And at only 20 years old, is potentially a player who Dean Smith sees some potential in. And then speaking about his brother, James Tavernier has also been linked to the championship with West Brom said to be interested in the Rangers fullback. Aston Villa, also another club who are monitoring him at the moment. You have to say, as a fullback, he's got an incredible scoring record. In 57 appearances for Rangers last season, in all competitions, he was able to score 17 goals. In his career already, he's already scored over 50 goals, which for a fullback is absolutely immense. Rangers definitely won't be willing to sell on the cheap though and with some Premier League interest it's doubtful that West Brom would be able to get this one over the line. And with NT Middlesbrough defender Dale Fry being linked to the Premier League with Burnley said to be interested. This link does make sense. He's the sort of player that Burnley tend to go for. Fairly young as well, only 21 years old. Really emerged last season. He made over 30 appearances for Middlesbrough. Very strong, composed on the ball. Can either play at centre-back or full-back and he's probably one of the most promising defenders in the Championship at the moment. Burnley have got a bit of a history dealing with Middlesbrough defenders obviously signing Gibson a couple of years ago and Dale Fry is potentially following in his foot steps going to Burnley. Middlesbrough though definitely can't be allowing a player of his talent to be leaving on the cheek. This early into the transfer window pretty much every top 10 side has been linked with the move for Dwight Gale. After coming off the back of scoring 24 goals for West Brom last season, the Newcastle striker is in very high demand at the moment and Middlesbrough are said to be the latest of clubs who are interested in the striker's services. I think eventually he will end up back in the championship. Newcastle don't seem too keen to keep hold of him. Whoever does end up with Dwight Gale in the end though is in for a treat. In his last two championship seasons he scored over 45 goals 
combined. And speaking about Middlesbrough, they're also the latest club to be linked to Hull City winger Kamil Grosicki. Last season scoring 9 goals, amping up 12 assists. We spoke about Grosicki quite a lot in the previous transfer video as Nottingham Forest emerged as the club who were interested in him. But they now face competition from Middlesbrough. It's looking as if Middlesbrough are trending towards going for a few more creative players in this transfer window as they look to score more goals going into next season. Then on to some Bristol City news. They're trying to do their best at the moment to secure the signature of Thomas Callas who was on loan there last season. They're trying to make that into a permanent move over this summer. Honestly, if they do pull this off, that will be an absolute masterstroke from them. The partnership that Callas and Webster form last season made Bristol City into one of the best defensive units in the league, really. They were a really tough side to break down. Callas made 38 appearances for Bristol City last season. In that time, he had an average match rating of 7.06. And if Bristol City do get to see another year of Webster and Callas at the back, they'll be in good hands going into next season. And Bristol City are also doing their best to try and secure the signature of Jay De Silva after the sale of Lloyd Kelly to Bournemouth. De Silva will be the obvious replacement for him after being on loan at Bristol City from Chelsea last season. QPR are said to be the other championship club who are interested in the left back. Only 21 years old. And it's looking like it'll be his choice as to where he ends up this summer. The next transfer rumour looks a bit more like fan gossip at the moment. I'm not seeing anything concrete on it, but Bristol City have been talked about as interested in Ben Pearson. Now, if this one did happen, I would be absolutely devastated. Ben Pearson is the heartbeat of this Preston side and we don't function well without him. Our win ratio with and without Ben Pearson, it's staggering to see the difference. The major downfall of Ben Pearson throughout his career has been his disciplinary record. He picked up three red cards last season and 14 yellow cards. So the amount of time he was suspended for, he only went ahead and played 30 games for Preston. But with that being said, he is by far our best player and we can't afford to be selling a player like him if we do seriously want to be challenging for the top six next season. It's interesting because I do remember the last summer transfer window when Stoke City were being heavily linked with the move for Ben Pearson. I think they wanted to go in with a bit of around about £8 million. Preston were saying that's far off the mark. We were looking at 15 upwards. And if we were to sell a player like Ben Pearson, it would have to be for a, just a ridiculous amount of money. And Johnny Williams has also emerged as the latest player to be linked to Bristol City as well. He's been linked all around the championship at the moment. Swansea, Brentford, Preston have all been mentioned linked to the midfield. He spent last season with Charlton, really impressed while he was there. Managed to stay relatively injury free. And it looks like it's just the case that Charlton couldn't afford to keep him on going into next season. So Johnny Williams, more than likely that he will end up somewhere in the championship. And if he is able to stay fit over a season, it'd be a good option for someone. And the next transfer rumour also emerges as quite an interesting one, with potentially Christian Walton going to Derby County and Jaden Bogle heading in the opposite direction, moving from Derby going to Brighton. Walton spent the last two seasons out on loan at Wigan Athletic. In that time, I think he's done fairly well. Last season in the Championship, in 34 appearances, he kept nine clean sheets. If a swap deal was to happen between Bogle and Walton, it would probably include Brighton paying a little bit more to get the deal done, probably somewhere in the region of 10 to 15 million pounds. For the past few weeks, Derby have also been linked to Everton defender Matthew Paynton. He spent the last five or so seasons out on loan and it's looking like he's looking for a permanent move away from Everton now to really look to kickstart his career. He spent last season on loan at Ipswich Town, obviously not having the best of times there. But only being 24 years old, he could be a decent option for Derby going into the future as they look to continue to lower the age of their average squad. And we could potentially be seeing Brandon Barker moving back to Deepdale next season. He spent last season on loan from Man City and he's been dropping a few sort of hints on social media, I guess, lately that he wouldn't mind a move back to Deepdale. I'm not sure what I'd make of Brandon Barker coming back. He spent a lot of last season out injured throughout his career. He has struggled a little bit with injuries. His pace going forward and the ability to take it past a man is unquestionable. It's just that at times he can drift out of the game and consistency is maybe not quite there for him yet. And Preston have also been linked to Man City midfielder Luka Illich potentially on the loan move to Deepdale. We seem to have a good relationship with Man City at the moment. We have been linked with a lot of their players but uh, he spent last season out on loan in the Eredivisie. In that time he scored two goals and picked up two assists. He made eight starts and eight appearances from the bench. After reading about him a little bit, he does strike me as quite a similar player to Josh Harrop. Sort of a technical number 10 who looks to make things happen, open up the game a little bit. And a little bit more is developing around the Jack Butland story at the moment. Bournemouth and Crystal Palace are the two clubs said to be the most interested in the goalkeeper. Despite the sort of shambles of a season that Stoke had last season, Butland was one player who really did impress me. He kept 18 clean sheets last season and considering the defence that he was playing behind, that takes some doing to be fair to him. He did dig Stoke out on quite a few occasions but I think that thinking of his international career with England I'm not sure how another season in the championship it probably wouldn't do him any favours really the interesting thing to watch out for will be how much money does Stoke hold out for getting for Jack Butland at the moment it's looking like they're looking for around about 25 to 30 million pounds so will that be paid by Bournemouth or Crystal Palace I'm not so sure and then we've seen Ollie Watkins being linked with the move to the Premier League and to Sheffield United after last season scoring 10 goals amping up 6 assists for Brentford I'd argue it probably wasn't his best season last 
time for Brentford. He had a few inconsistent spells for them. I think that Brentford fans will be more keen on keeping hold of someone like Neil Mapeo Ben Rama. But even so, at 23 years old, he's still a hot prospect from the championship. Moving to Sheffield United, it's a really interesting one with Sheffield United because wingers haven't really got on the best at United over the past few years, primarily because of the system they like to play. You know, Sheffield United play with wing backs, then like to play fairly narrow going forward with two strikers and a number 10 in behind. Where does Ollie Watkins fit into that? I'm not so sure. In fairness to Watkins, he can be very diverse with the positions he plays. He can either play on the left or the right or maybe even at centre forward. Being younger in English, Brentford probably will demand quite a high price tag, but this is one that I actually could see coming off. And then we've got Nottingham Forest who have been linked with the move for Christian Stuani. Last season in La Liga with Girona, he scored 19 goals, 23 in all competitions and considering they went on to get relegated, that's a very impressive record. Last time the 32-year-old was in England was of course with Middlesbrough. His last season in the Championship, he scored 7 goals, although I believe he played quite a bit of that season out on the wing. But if the price tag was reasonable, that would be a really good scoop for Nottingham Forest. He is 32 years old, that's worth considering. It's really dependent on how much money Forrest are willing to spend in this summer. And it's also looking like Forrest will be going in for 23-year-old winger Gavin White from Oxford United. He scored 7 goals in League 1 last season, 9 in all competitions, the Northern Ireland winger. It's looking like the fee will be around about £2 million. This is looking like an area Forrest are looking to strengthen in, as over the past few weeks we have seen them being linked to quite a few wingers. Charles Athletic are on the lookout for a replacement for Johnny Williams, a creative central midfielder, and Oz Toomer from Bolton could be that player. He didn't really fit in at Bolton last season. Being only 5 foot 3 and playing in quite a direct system under Phil Parkinson, that move was never really going to work out for him, but potentially moving to Charlton, the football would suit him a lot better. In his previous two seasons with Walsall, before he went on to join Bolton, he scored over 30 goals in League One. The Championship didn't see the best of Oz Toomer last season, and I would quite like to see him get a move back to the league, and for him to really be able to show off what he can do. Charles not also one of the clubs interested in Gillingham striker Tom Eves. Last season in League One, he scored 21 goals. Always was going to attract quite a lot of interest. A really good hold-up player, and I'd be surprised if he doesn't get his move to the Championship this season, because whenever I did catch a glimpse of him, he was always very impressive to me. Luton Town fullback James Justin is in very high demand at the moment. Aston Villa, Stoke City, and Leicester City all very interested in the fullback. Now, the fee being talked about, you know, with all those three clubs interested, the fee, there could be a bit of a bidding war going in for this one, and the fee could continue to rise. If that is the case, Luton will be losing the quality player in Justin, but even so, they could seriously use that transfer fee to reinvest in some other areas of the squad. And after being released from Aston Villa, Glenn Whelan could be making the move back to the league and back to former club Stoke City. I don't think that would be a bad move for him per se. He is getting on a little bit, but the majority of his appearances for Villa last season, he was still at the level required for the championship. He put in some very good performances for them, actually. He wouldn't be starting week in, week out, but I think he'd be a decent character to have around the dressing room. I forgot to mention it in last week's video, but it's looking like Adam Davis will also be making the move to Stoke City, potentially as a replacement for Jack Butland, who could be heading in the other direction. Kieran Dell, the Everton youngster, has emerged as a target for Huddersfield Town, potentially another move to the Championship. He spent the last two seasons out on loan here a couple of years ago at Nottingham Forest, where he was able to score 10 goals in all competitions from midfield, and he spent the second half of last season on loan at Sheffield United, where I think he actually went on to impress, made quite a few appearances from the bench, but even so, in that time, the fans really took to him, and I think that Sheffield United will be quite keen to get him back in the summer, actually. But if he was looking for regular game time, perhaps that will come back in the Championship and with Huddersfield Town, and maybe with a couple of Huddersfield's more creative midfielders leaving, it's looking like Aaron Moy will probably be off. Someone like Dell could come in to fill that void in the summer. Brentford look like they'll be going in for Bolton youngster Harry Brockbank. Last season, he played three games for Bolton towards the end of the season, plays as a right back. Only 20 years old, he's someone who Brentford will look to develop, and he fits into their recruitment policy. The next story was always going to come up eventually. Jay Rodriguez being linked with a move back to Burnley. I think that this, this transfer rumour comes up every year pretty much. I remember talking about it last year, but after having an impressive season in the Championship, Jay Rodriguez was always going to be linked back to somewhere in the Premier League. Ruben Lamaras is available on a free transfer this summer after his contract ran out at Plymouth. Last season in League One, he scored 11 goals from midfield and is in quite high demand actually. A few Championship clubs sniffing around at the moment with Swansea, Cardiff and Charlton all said to be interested in the midfield. And then finally to round off the video, we had quite an interesting story come out the other day that Benfica are looking to enter sort of a sporting partnership with Wigan Athletic which could see Benfica sending some of their younger talents out on loan to Wigan and I mean that would make for an exciting season next time for Wigan. So we could be seeing some young Portuguese talent rocking the DW next season which would be a sight to behold I must say. But guys there you have it, that will now wrap it up for this video so there are some of the latest transfer rumours which are flying around the league. If you have seen any stories that we didn't mention in today's video make sure to get them in the comments down below and we can have a bit of a discussion about them. But apart from that, that will now wrap it up for this video so thank you so much for watching. If you did go on to enjoy make sure you do leave a like as well as
as that, make sure you subscribe for some regular championship content. Check out all the other links in the description down below. But apart from that, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.